All right. So let's get back to topic. Welcome to this wonderful day uh, today. Um, today I'm going to uh, yeah listen to Andreas talk about Quarkus. And uh, so let's get this thing started. What are you teaching us today? Today we want to look into um, caching. And not just any caching, but in memory caching in your Quarkus. And All right. As always, you will see this is super simple and super easy. <laughs> so, um, yeah, let's get started. Okay, so I guess you have to talk a little bit louder. I have to talk louder. Yeah, uh, looks like it. Okay. Uh, so, let's get into application data caching. Um, and this is the guide for it. The Quarkus guide is always a very good guide, very... Um, yeah, detailed and everything. Um, so just have a look there. Um, what we want to do, we want to use the Quarkus cache extension. Yeah, here you can see the name, uh, the Quarkus cache extension. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> More is in the way. Yeah. Um, and we will use it to um, speed up, for example, uh, expensive calls. Um, or ex for example, if you if you need to load um, some configuration that is um, expensive to load, my, maybe a remote call and you need it all the time, um, but you don't need to refresh it all the time. It can be cached and then you can cache it in memory, which is the fastest way you can access it then. And that's what we want to do. Okay. Um, so first, let's build a small example. Um, we want to have a weather resource. Let's get a weather forecast today. And it's let's... cloudy with a chance of meatball. Cloudy <laughs> with a chance of meatball. Okay. Um, sad vegetarians. <laughs> um, maybe as a, a starter, uh, we use REST Easy Reactive uh, with Jackson. Um, for the uh, Jackson, JSON parsing, um, as always, we use Kotlin, and we now also use the Quarkus cache uh, extension. Exactly. So, what we will do, we build this first weather service. Um, it will provide us something like uh, get forecast. Um, it's a get request, returns a string. Very, very simple. And we want the parameters um, rest query. So we want uh, a city parameter and uh, we would also like to know the weather for a date. Um, wait, yes. <clears throat> so um, that's the rest endpoint basically. Um, now we need to fetch the data. Um, so what we will do, we create a, a service. And this is our uh, expensive weather forecast service. It does what the name says, it's expensive. So now you're talking about delays or what are you yeah. going to do? Okay. <laughs> so for example, um, expensive, yeah, in sense of delay, um, runtime or uh, compute. Um, so maybe um, you need to calculate some, um, so maybe you get some config from somewhere, but then you need to calculate some stuff based on it that okay. you want to use. And this can also be computed intensive and you don't want to do this on every call for your REST endpoint, but maybe only every five minutes or every hour or every day. Okay. Um, so um, in this weather service, we also have like a, a function uh, get forecast for city and uh, the date. And it also returns spring. Not sure if you uh, want to have a four case, but I think you want four to have a forecast. Cast. Perfect. Thank you. So um, we have some limited weather options. 
<laughs> um, I should remove the sunny, then it's like German winter weather. <laughs> but then also the snowy has to go. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, it's starting to get spring. That's good. Um, so we will basically just calculate some weather. Um, give me a second, then I will tell you what is this. Um, so first of all, this will take a while. It will take two seconds. This is just to simulate a remote call or some expensive calculation without having, having to do it. Um, then we calculate our weather index. Um, I just did it by um, using the hash code of the city. So if we have a different city, it will be different. Um, and also for every day, we will have a different weather. And then we modulo it by the number of weather options we have, and then we select one of the weather options. So basically, it's some magic calculation for some day in some city, we will have some value. All right. So um, <clears throat> let's test this by injecting it here. Uh, cast service. Here we use it to get the forecast, city, date. And then we return some fancy string like uh, weather in city will be on the top on something like that and we start it and have a look you don't have to do any uh, suspending or anything no we, way... we do it fully blocking <clears throat> okay it's always the simplest thing just go with fully blocking um most users will never get to the kind of uh regress per second where you see an improvement of uh, reactive over blocking um, I recently did a test where I had a small service, it just did some address validation um, with Quarkus and I did it fully blocking and it was like 4,000 requests, 5,000 requests per second uh, that it could handle and then I made it reactive and it was like 6,300. So it is quite a bit more, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but you will not get to 5,000 requests per second, most probably. Um, if you get to that region, then you can start scaling and or then go the reactive route. But I would never start with it. That's okay. it's just it makes your life easier with the blocking route. Um, yes, so we have started the service. So let's have a check. I open my postman here. I have a get weather call. It goes to. Uh, yeah, then I need. <laughs> yeah, um, it goes to localhost 8080 where Quarkus is always running. Um, whether uh, we take the city card through and the date is tomorrow. And we call it and it takes quite a while, but then we find out tomorrow it will snow in card through. That is not a promising uh, thing. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Then let's check Stuttgart. Sunny. Same day, but different weather. Um, yeah. So that's the main idea of this simple service. You can service. open it a little, as you make it uh, the yeah. window a little bit bigger. So uh, you can see the timing for it because uh, now it's cut off. Uh, okay. Yeah. Let's do it like this. Yeah. So, so you see the two seconds. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Around <clears throat> down here, you see the two seconds. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> yes. So. Now let's add some logging so we know what exactly happens on the Quarkus side. Um. So, weather forecast for city on date okay 
And we can do the same in here. And then we also lock here. On forecast is exceptionally hard to write. <laughs> I don't know what you mean. <laughs> <clears throat> Finished batching weather forecast and it's good for code. Okay. So now we have some logging. Let's make another call. This time it takes a bit longer because as we know, Quarkus will recompile automatically. Um, and this recompilation takes also a bit of time. And then we have the two seconds. So now we have had eight seconds. Let's try again, two seconds. So, okay. and when we look at the logs here, we see Quarkus was restarted. Then the first call, fetching weather forecast for Stuttgart, start fetching in the service. Um, also here we see it was 43, uh, behind Moritz. We see it was uh, 43 and then 45 we finished. And then we see the second call, okay. So at the All moment, right. <clears throat> we see every one of these calls is very expensive, takes a very long time um, and would do some expensive calculation or so. And this doesn't really scale. So what we can do, we have already added the Quarkus cache annotation. This provides us an in-memory cache. It's not shared with other nodes. It's just in this Quarkus instance. So that's something to keep in mind. If you want a shared cache, then you need to go to uh, Redis or um, there's also an infinity span extension. So we want to cache this call. Guess what we need to do? We add an annotation. And we give this cache a name. This is my weather cache. Okay. Okay. So let's see. Again, Quarkus is recompiling, so it <laughs> takes a bit. Oh, this time the recompilation was quick. And now we see every Ooh. further call is super fast. Because it's cached. Nice. Yeah. That's all? <laughs> That's caching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> um, so this is some kind of uh, dictionary where you just put in the request and it will save automatically the response and when you have to you do this again it will basically give you the response that was um, calculated before right yes um exactly so uh, how long does the does the cache last yes that's something we can configure okay um we will have a look at that in a moment um First, about how does this caching work? Um, it uses the parameters of the method to calculate a cache key. Mm -hmm. So okay. it's important that you have the same order and, of the, and types of the parameter if you want to use this in another method. So you could mm -hmm. even have another method using the same cache result annotation mm -hmm. that gets the same value. Then. Um, and we can later use it to also invalidate the cache manually to say, hey, for this city, we want to invalidate the cache. Um, that's something we can also have a look later. Mm -hmm. And like you said, for basically the cache key, it calculates for that cache key it uses um, or it stores the result that we retrieved. Okay. And yeah, but that's the initial caching. Nice. Okay. Um, now let's have a look at how you want to we... recap this beforehand. Oh or... yeah, we, we can do that. Yeah. Yeah. So, if you want to cache something with Quarkus in memory, then what you need to do is you add the Quarkus cache and uh, extension. Okay. And then you add add cache result 
with a cache name to some non-private method. Keep in mind, it must not be private. Um, and with that, the caching works. Nice. OK. Perfect. <laughs> First part done. All right. <laughs> so uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Thanks. Thank you for joining. See you next time. Have a great weekend. Bye. Bye.